Yeah. Right, this next one is about core practical one. So the practical is the effect of caffeine on heart rate, and we look at this in Daphnia. So first of all, uh, thinking about Daphnia, what are Daphnia? They're obviously these little tiny flies that we use, and they are invertebrates. So what is an invertebrate, and why do we do you do we use Daphnia for this experiment? So they're invertebrates, which means they've got no spine, no backbone. Um, some people think that testing on them is unethical they can't consent <laughs> obviously um, and some people will argue that that's an argument however their nervous system is much simpler than vertebrates and that's how we justify using them so their nervous system Is much simpler than vertebrates. And the reason why that's important is that they don't have any emotion, they don't have any way to realise that something hurts. So it's not that there isn't a signal sent that hurts them, but they don't know that. There's no emotional awareness. Um, uh, of feeling pain okay so they don't feel pain and that is enough to make it legally uh, acceptable uh, to use them um they're also uh more distantly related to humans than vertebrates are um which actually makes them worse to use, not better, because the findings that we find in invertebrates might not be transferable to humans. So they're a starting point and they're useful and some things do translate across to vertebrates like humans, but there will obviously be differences. So that is a kind of downside of using invertebrates for this experiment. Okay, so they're more distantly related to vertebrates um, so findings not as transferable okay but lots of things are transferable and we do use invertebrates we are allowed to use invertebrates like daphnia and the findings are important okay um let's go through how you would do this uh, experiment. So Daphnia in particular as invertebrates uh, are transparent and that's really useful because we can actually see their heart, their hearts. Transparent so we can see their heart which is really useful. Um, As with any experiment, we need to know our variables. So we've got independent, dependent, and control. So independent variable is the one that we're changing. So in this experiment, we change the concentration of caffeine. The de dependent variable is the one that we're measuring. And in this case, we measure the heart rate of the daphnia in beats per minute. Okay, it's worth when you put your... Um, uh, variables putting uh, the units of how you measure it on there as well. There's loads of things that we should control. So we should control the temperature. Um, it's really, really good habit again to say with each control variable how you'll control it. That tends to pick you up more marks in exams. So uh, to control temperature, you could keep them in a pot, in a water bath. Uh, you could you keep them uh, in the same place all the time rather than moving them from place to place might change the temperature etc um, the volume of different solutions should be kept the same uh, so you use the same number of drops on the daphnia so we, we put the caffeine solution on the daphnia so it's important we don't put two on one daphnia and then we put five on the next one so same number of drops 
each time. So maybe just always try and use quantities where you can. Five drops, let's say. Just make it up. As long as it's reasonable, it's fine. Uh, the stress on the deaf ear. So obviously doing experiments on deaf ear might stress them out. Um, and that might affect their heart rate. So it's really important that we try to minimise the stress of the deaf ear. Um, and that's probably going to come when we move them around. So try to, to move them around the least we can. Um, we should try to use Daphne that are the same size. Uh, and that's each time we repeat, pick ones of similar size. Uh, time to acclimatise, so they're going to take time to get used to being in a certain concentration of caffeine. We need to give them time to do that. Concentration, uh, so always leave for five minutes, okay? So again, look how I'm using numbers. I'm just explaining how I control my control variables and I'm trying to put methods in uh, in brief. Try to use numbers as well where possible. Uh, method, how do you actually do this experiment? Remember, methods are numbered steps that begin with verbs, they begin with uh, doing words. So the first thing is to make your uh, caffeine concentrations. Revert independent variables, we always need five. And in a method in an exam, you need to always use numbers, okay? It doesn't matter if you make them up, as long as they're reasonable, they'll be fine. So for example, not uh, uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, just something along those lines. Okay, um, then you need to put your Daphne onto the cavity slide. So use uh, references to the equipment you use as well. So use tweezers, for example, to move one Daphne onto cavity slide. So a cavity slide is a slide that's got like a little indent in the middle to hold something. Uh, it's got uh, that indent you called a well. It's got a well in it. Then you're going to use your pipette to add the solution. So look how I'm incorporating the equipment that I would use. So use a pipette to add the first caffeine solution. Remember that we were going to use the same number of drops. So five drops, use the values, use the numbers. Uh, you're then going to wait for five minutes. Remember, we're incorporating our variables into a method. So wait five minutes to acclimatize. Right, that's really important um, because it will take time to absorb the caffeine and adjust to the to the caffeine concentration uh, that you've put it in. Um, next one is to add a few strands of cotton wool. That just stops them moving around too much, makes it easier to count. A few strands of cotton wool to keep still. If necessary, look, I'm explaining on the step why I'm doing it, if possible. Um, that's why you need to count the heartbeats, okay? So it's going to be really hard to count for a whole 60 seconds the heartbeat of a deaf ear. It beats too fast, okay? So you'll remember from doing this, actually the best way to do it was to record it on your phone camera and then watch it in slow motion to count much more accurately. Also, you don't have to do it for the full 60 seconds. You could record it for 20 seconds and multiply it by three. So we could say record uh, the heartbeat uh, for 20 seconds. OK, and then uh, calculate beats per minute. So you're just multiplying the result by three. OK, makes it much more accurate doing it that way than trying to count by eye for a whole 60 minutes. You'll get that 
more accurate result, which means a result that's closer to the true value. So if the true value was 100 beats um, and you were trying to do it by eye for 60 seconds, you might go like 120. It's not very accurate. It's not very close to 100. If you did it on your phone for 20 seconds and multiplied it by three, watched it in slow motion, you could really count every beat. It's much more accurate. OK, remember that when you get to... Uh, the end you're going to have to then repeat it for each concentration then at the end of every method you do you always say repeat three times calculate the mean to increase reliability remember r for repeats r for reliability all right so what's this actually going to show us? What are we going to find out from this experiment? So it's going to give you a positive correlation. So a positive correlation in that as you increase caffeine concentration, it increases the way to say it is as the caffeine concentration increases mm. well, okay so that's our positive correlation that we'll get from our results remember that as you write your conclusion you must refer to numbers from the results okay so they'll give you a results table and you need to refer to results numbers from the numbers. um try to if you can because it's basically like describing try to make comparative statements so faster higher but also something like twice three times as fast things like that phrases like that the comparisons aren't they and also if you're going to slot it in a percentage change calculation is always good difference divided by original times 100 okay um, as we always do i require practicals where we get to the evaluation so that i should have said that's like a conclusion We need to also do an evaluation. And there's basically like loads of specific languages language that you need to be using for this one. So the first one's reliability. Um, so we've talked about that bit already. Let's just go back and add it in actually here rather than repeating it. So repeat three times calculate I mean to increase reliability. So if you're asked about reliability, it's all to do with repeats. Also, uh, this reduces the anomalies. You can see the anomalies better. Okay, so if you repeat it more times, it's really obvious which ones are anomalies, and then you don't include those in your read. Uh, reproducibility is slightly different to reliability. Reliability is when you do it again exactly the same way. Reproducibility means somebody else does it. They might use a different method, but if they get the same result, then that's great. It backs up your results, doesn't it? OK, you're comparing it to another practical. If that practical gives the same results as your practical did, that's encouraging that, uh, that your results are accurate, that they're right. OK, the next word is validity. Validity is all to do with only changing one variable. Um, because that enables us to answer the original question. So only change one variable. So in this one, only change the caffeine concentration, keep everything else the same. That will give you valid results. Precise results. So the precision of your results um, means when you repeat, uh, do you get the same result again and again? All right, so the more similar your repeats are, the more precise your results are. Accurate means close to the true value. Now, that's hard to, to say, really. 
you can uh, compare to like published results that other scientists have got and that will reassure you whether they're close to the true value. You can plot them on a graph and see uh, if they fit on a, a good line of best fit, things like that. That tells you whether they're close to the true value, unless they're all out by the same amount, of course. Uh, but that's what accuracy means. Are they close to the true value? Next one is the uncertainty. Uncertainty is usually due to the sensitivity of the apparatus. So it's half the smallest scale that the device can measure. Now, the only thing you were really measuring in this one uh, was time because the counting you did. So in a way, the uncertainty comes from your counting skills. <laughs> uh, you're not really measuring time. I suppose, I suppose you are. So you, you could argue half the smallest um, increment of the stopwatch but that wasn't really the limiting factor was it because you weren't measuring to like a hundredth of a second or anything like that it was really due to your your human <laughs> interpretation of that okay in this one uh, a human error i suppose uh, and percentage uh, error is the last the last one okay that they might ask so that's the end of that one